sounds is that too you are blowing my like thank you thank you isn't that to say looking snatched in that duke yes i figured since i'm reading <laughs> i'm reading um this i like i haven't gotten around to reading it but i figured i might as well like look like a, a nubian queen <laughs> me and my hey how are you guys how was your week how was your reading week um hello everybody how are you how are you how are you happy thursday it feels like friday because obviously you know um i want to move my tripod i don't know if okay so i'm reading the secret lives of baba segi's wives i'm gonna read uh a little bit about I don't want to read from the back of the book actually I thought I was gonna read from um, sorry hey have you guys read the book um hi NC Sintatu says, you got a tripod? No wonder you haven't been struggling. <laughs> yes, I got a tripod. I had to get a tripod because, you know, the the blocks were not working and Mo was going back to school. So there was no way. And some of the other books that I read are not really for a 10-year-old's ears. So, yeah, I had to get a tripod. There was no way like <laughs> you know the the some of the content that i read on wednesdays and on like ugh, some of these things are just too big for his ears so i had to get a tripod because he couldn't play uh cameraman hey says hey <laughs> um as he says that that head wrap needs its own live sis listen i <laughs> I'm just happy it's Thursday. It's almost Friday. Like Friday is my favorite day of the week. But I think with the lockdown and the restrictions, having that whole alcohol being sold from Monday to Thursday, it feels like it's Friday today. Cause you know, it's almost it's like it's five. So <laughs> thank you, sis. You inspired it. Sarah is, hi, hi, Sarah. Mwah, mwah. Love to you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so you guys must follow Books and Rhymes. Books and Rhymes is in the comments. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much. Hi, Samu. Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. So yesterday we had, if you missed yesterday's reading, it is on IGTV and up on YouTube. It is loaded. And, um, I did actually load Tuesday's reading today as well because I was just lazy. I'm sorry. But it is up. So if you haven't been um on for a while uh, i do have a youtube channel now so all the readings that i do here on igtv i load them up onto igtv and then i load load them up onto youtube so there is a channel and i will be running a competition soon well it's not, like i don't want to call it a competition but i'm running a giveaway for getting to 50 50 subscribers 50 is big guys on youtube so <laughs> once i get to 50 which is about a couple more to go then i'll have a, a giveaway so you must subscribe to the channel unfortunately it won't be international because obviously lockdown there is no shipping there's no nothing happening so it will be open for south africans only um, because I can pack C, I can pep to pep, I can, cause yeah, I can risk it and just put on a mask and go to pep. And yeah, so I'll be running that soon. I don't know what book am I giving away, but for celebrating 50 subscribers, there will be a giveaway soon if I do get to 50. So 50 subscribers on YouTube. Anyway, I'll be talking about that afterwards as well. Um, that was really fast, Sintatu. Apparently it's very fast. I don't know. I don't know 
I'd like to get a 200 and then 500. So there will be a giveaway every time there is a big number. So 50 is big to me. So yes, thank you Zintatu. She says, oh wow, 50 already. Well done, Umpi. That was really fast. It's about 28 days or yeah, it's more or less 28 days since I've been um, loading the videos on there. Um, I should have, I should start maybe July, end of July, I'll start like loading other things that I don't load on to IGTV and then I can load them onto YouTube. But yeah, anyway, let us read Baba, the secret, we call it the secret lives, the secret lives of Baba Sergi's wives. So I've always wanted to have this book and I got it from a friend of mine, Annalile Gebikeko. She wrote Egoli Dreams. Check that out. And she has her own publishing house, which is Nokurasa Publishing. She is also on Instagram as Nokurasa, N-O-K-U-R-A-S-A, -A, Nokurasa Publishing. And yeah, uh, follow her and check out her journey. But yeah, she's the one who got me this book. So I do get like, don't be jealous and say I, I get books and I've got money. No, I don't have money. I've got friends who buy me books. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> but yes, my friends understand me and they get me books and I love them for that. But yes, guys, um, yesterday we discussed that I should read this today. So this is what I'm reading. Meet the man of the house. Plump and prosperous. He has seven children, but his desire for more just might be his undoing. And his wife's. The first will stop at nothing to rule the house. The second is shy and timid. Her life is shadowed by fear. The third is a schemer with crimson lips and expensive tastes. And the fourth doesn't know it, but she has the power to unmask them all. So, yeah, that is the secret lives of Babasegi's wives. Um, and Petina Gapa, we were actually talking about Petina Gapa in the, um, the co-reading group that I'm on for the 30th Candle. That's what we're reading now. Um, and Petina Gapa says, a funny and moving story told with love and compassion. And um, I don't know all the other people, but yeah, that's what Petina Gapa said about this book. Um, I put my my old license, my old driver's license as a bookmark because I was sampling the book. That's why I ended up thinking that I had read it for you guys and I hadn't. Um, so I was sampling it and I did this, but I actually didn't go that far because I'm still on the first page. I don't know what I, I did, but well, maybe the book, the bookmark fell and, but I did sample it. Um... Echo this, echo underscore this says, I've always wanted to read this book. Oh, I am glad you are here to listen to this read. So the first, okay, I read the back of the book and I thought I was going to read about Lola, but. Oh, okay. Lola Shoneyin is a Nigerian poet and author who launched her debut novel, The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Was. Uh, wait, she is, wait, I'm on Wikipedia, but I'm just going to read a little bit. Um, this book was actually launched in the UK in 2010. How come we took so long to actually warm up to it? I don't understand us. Like, when I see a copy of the book, my heart is shattered in tiny pieces. Why? Miss Weiner... Ms. Vina says, when I see a copy of the book, my heart is shattered in tiny pieces. What happened? Lola was at Abantu last year, right? I was too shy to ask for a picture, but she was really, really nice. Oh, a colleague and friend disposed. <laughs> they stole her book. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I love Lola, but I was too shy to ask for a picture because I love pictures, but I was too shy. But anyway... Lola was born in 74 in Ibadan, Nigeria, and she's a Nigerian poet and author. Um, and she launched this book in 2010, May. Shonayin has forged a reputation as an adventurous, humorous, and outspoken poet, often cla classed in the feminist mold. Having published three volumes of poetry, in April, she was named on um, the Hay Festival's Africa 39 list of 39 Sub-Saharan African writers. 
uh, aged under 40 with potential and talent to define trends and Af in African literature. And Lola won a, a Penn Award in America as well as the Ken Sarawiwa Award for Prose in Nigeria. She was also on the list for the Orange Prize in the UK for her debut novel, The Secret Lives, The Secret, The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives. Okay, Wikipedia must edit this out because she lives in Lagos, Nigeria, where she runs the annual Ake Art and Book Festival. One day we will go to Ake, guys. It is a dream of mine. We will go to Ake. Yeah, uh, Miss Viner, I'm jealous. My Miss Viner says I have a beautiful picture with Lola. I swallowed my shyness. Yo, I couldn't, hey. She was just so awesome, and she wore these specs, and she was just so cute with blonde hair. Oh, anyway, so yeah, she runs um the Ake Festival, and it is coming up, and it will be virtual, like everything else. So yeah, we'll check that out later in the year. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, she, in 2017, she was actually named African Literary Person of the Year by Brittle Paper. So, y'all better recognize. Okay, so this is the first chapter and the chapters are not named. They are just named according to what takes place inside the chapter. This first chapter is called Belly Ache. When Baba Segi awoke with a belly ache for the sixth day in a row, he knew it was time to do something drastic about his fourth wife's childlessness. He was sure the pain wasn't caused by hunger or trapped gas. It was from the buildup of months and months of worry. A grunt escaped from the woman lying next to him. He glanced sideways and saw that his leg had stapled Iatope, his second wife, to the bed. He observed the jerky rise and fall of her bosom, but he didn't move to ease her discomfort. His thoughts returned to Bona Bol Bolanle and his stomach tightened again. So Bolanle is um, his fourth wife. His thoughts returned to Bolanle and his stomach tightened again. Then and there, then and there he decided to pay teacher a visit. He would get there at sunrise so teacher would know it was no ordinary stopover. As soon as his driver parked the pickup truck by the gutter that circled Aikara, Babasegi flung open the passenger door and, and re-inflated his large frame. Without a word or a backward glance at his driver, he dashed down a narrow alleyway. If his eyes hadn't been entirely fixed on teacher's shack, he might have noticed that his driver had scrambled after him. Babasegi stepped aside to make room for the school children on their daily pilgrimage. These children went to great pains to bid teacher good morning, just to see him steam up the louvres with his response. Good morning, the smoky-eyed sage hummed. The children waved happily and toddled off to school. Babasegi shook his head, so he is big. If their parents ever discovered that they had strayed from the dusty road that led to wisdom, stepped wide-legged over spluttering gutters and shifted between random buildings, those children would be in grave trouble. Teacher Shack was in Ayigara, and Ayigara was not a place for children. It wasn't a specific place, but when you asked for directions, people looked away from their twirling wrists. There were three reasons for this. First, absolutely no one wanted to admit to knowing where it was, in case their neighbors were listening. Second, Aigara didn't have distinct boundaries. Last, Aigara was more than four or five parallel streets laced by lasciviousness it was a spirit. The dark buildings were full of women whose faces glowed under ultraviolet lights. These women lived for other women's men. They cooked for them, drank with them, fought over them, fucked them, nursed them, slept them and loved them. And when the longing love caused made them ill, 
they surrendered their lives and died for them. Teacher's shack, with its shiny glass windows and gleaming shot glasses, was sandwiched between two brothels. Mostly, the skimpily dressed women brought their clients to drink the shack made whiskey, but on certain days, they would get to the door and retrace their steps. These were the days when men glared at them through squinted eyes, the days that men came to meet men to talk about women and the evil that they did. <laughs> These meetings were not pre-arranged. They just happened when two or three men were gathered. They started with one man lamenting his travails with a quarrelsome wife. As more men ducked through the doorframe, solutions were preferred. What worked wonders, what didn't work, what was worth trying, and what, if the man concerned wasn't careful, would eventually kill him. Every man had his say, but teacher always had the last word. He was impressive. There was no doubt about it. Even as the men sat curling at the ears from the heat, enveloped by the miasma of both human and animal waste, teacher would busy himself with his windows without breaking a bead, a bead of sweat. Gradually, his eyes would smoke up and become teary. Only then would he speak, and only in the Queen's English. Babasegi was first warned about Aigara when he was a young apprentice, but the cautioner was female and unconvincing. Besides, he had just moved to Ibadan and his innocence had become a burden the very kind Iagara women helped to relieve. Four wives and seven children on, he'd grown weary of the stench and his visits had dwindled to once or twice a month. Still, these men had helped him through his darkest days. Sixteen years before, when he was an impatient 26-year-old husband, Babasegi had sat with teacher and two other men to discuss a predicament that was similar to the one he was in now. He had been eager for his sick mother to see the fruit of his loins, but his wife's menstruation persisted. Teacher had suggested that he visit a herbalist and Iyasegi had, had lapped up the, the dark green powder her husband sprinkled on her palm. The medicine worked swiftly. Babasegi cried with both grief and gladness at his mother's burial, six weeks after the birth of his daughter, Segi. The door of the shack stood, stood ajar, so Babasegi entered the small room. He frowned. It annoyed him that Bo Bolandle was the reason he had come, when just two years before he had boasted of his conquest how Bolandle was tight as a bottleneck, how he pounded her until she was cross-eyed, and how she took the length of his manhood on her back, splayed out and submissive. He didn't quite know how he would tell the men that all his pounding had proved futile. Inside the shack, Babasegi was confronted with the same men who had pumped his hand when he first announced his intentions to marry bon Bolandle. And they were talking to teacher at a table by the window, so Babasegi dragged a stool over and joined them. He asked him what brought him there so early in the morning, and he told them of the agony that Bolandle's barrenness caused him. Okay, hold on. Let me just read if there are any comments before I go any further. Hi, Sharon. Sharon says, hey, look beautiful. Looking beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Ms. Vina says, I wonder how the book to film ad adoption will go, right? So excited about that. Portia, hey, my friend. You look gorgeous. Thank you. <sighs> Hi, Angela. Angela says, this is my favorite book this year. I laughed till I nearly cried. <laughs> Ms. Vina says, I'm also dazzled by the head wrap influenced by the book cover. Yes. 
um, Ms. Vanna says to Angela, just like how I experienced your characters in the 30th candle. <gasps> Listen, Angela, if you're still here, we 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 rereading um uh the 30th candle for 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 the month of July. And you I'm remember now I'm I'm being reminded of everything that I loved about the book when I read it 11 years ago. Anyway, I digress. Um okay. Hi everybody that just came in. Okay, so he is still at it's a yes. Inside the shack, Babasegi was confronted with the same men who had pumped his hand when he first announced his intentions to marry Bolandle. They were talking to teacher at a table by the window, so Babasegi dragged the stool over and joined them. They asked him what had brought him there so early in the morning, and he told them of the agony that Bolandle's barrenness caused him. Teacher closed his eyes and shook his head, while Olaupa, whose, whose lips were perpetually browned from kola nut, let out a long breath. Although he had, he also had four wives, he couldn't help remembering how the educated wife affair had overshadowed his own lib libidinal feats. None of his wives knew which end of a pencil to set to paper. Babasegi, I think you should drag her to a medicine man if she doesn't follow you. You are the husband and she is a mere wife. And the fourth one at that, if you drag her by the hair, she'll follow you anyway. I swear it. Atanda licked his forefinger and pointed it in the direction of his, of his maker. Even as he pinched a half-smoked stick of Captain Black from a tattered snuff box, the expression on his face was unforgiving. Atanda, you want to land Babasegi in jail? Who would dare drag a graduate when she opens her mouth and english begins to pour from it like heated palm oil the corporals will be so captivated they will throw our friend behind bars olaupa was a retired police surgeon and he knew more than anyone else that domestic violence was widely perceived as a waste of police resources you are quite right olaupa babasegi saw right through him Besides, these educated types were, were fed on cow's milk. We, as you know, didn't have that luxury. We suckled our mother's breasts. If I lift my hand to her, the next thing I know, I could be conversing with Ele Dumare. No, we must never manhandle our women, especially not someone like you, Olaoba, slight as you are. More men had ducked through the low door frame into the crowded room. Everyone chuckled. Yes, but whose wife's belly is as flat as a pauper's footstool? I may be slight, but I get the job done. Ulaupa was a sore loser. <laughs> Thank you for returning our mouths to the matter at hand, my friend. Babasegi thrust the back of his head in Ulaupa's direction and turned to the other men present. They stared back at him with sympathy in their eyes. An old night guard scratched away at the print on his t-shirt. It said 2001 is my year of increase. Why are you running skelter helter, Babasegi? Teacher's voice rang through the silence. Hmm. The sunlight ripped through the torn mosquito net, hit a glass and shone a halo on the wall near his head. You are running from post to pillar when the answer is there in front of your face. Since the woman is educated, she will only listen to people from the world she knows. The place to take her is the hospital. By the time Babasegi arrived at his workshop, his shop assistants were waiting by the giant padlock. Their greetings were met with a dismissive grunt and they swapped and they swapped knowing glances. It was going to be one of those days when Babasegi would sit stone-faced in the back room with his head held up by his fist. Babasegi knew it too. He sat at his desk, reached into a drawer and brought out the photograph Bolanle had pressed into his palm the day they met. As he thumbed away the film of dust on it, he thought how much her personality had changed 
how she'd slowly lost her meekness and become full of quiet boldness, how dis how discord had followed how discord had followed her into his home and made his other wives restless. He remembered the day when he first met her. She'd accompanied her friend Yemisi to his building materials store. Yemisi did small building contracts for the married men she screwed. Babasegi issued her the overinflated invoices she requested and the goods. It was all part of the business. Just double all the prizes, Yemi, Yemisi urged. Babasegi had noted Bolandle's embarrassment and was greatly relieved when Yamisi rushed outdoors to take a call on her mobile phone. Within moments, she came back into the store and announced that she had urgent business to attend to. Bolanle offered to wait for her in Babasegi's store. After she left, there was a brief stillness and Babasegi had taken the opportunity to let his eyes lick her unpainted fingernails, her lean face, her dark, plump lips and her eyes so it was love at first sight i'm assuming every blink was slow and calmly he became suddenly aware that he was inhaling the air that came from her from her eyes every blink was slow and calmly okay sorry i got distracted something happened here on the phone hi everybody um Ms. Vina says, I love the sexual innuendos laced in the book. Right? <laughs> that's wonderfully described. Beautiful writing. Um, that's Rashi. Hi, Rashi. Nonikiwe says, listening to you read this book makes me want to re reread it. Oh, beautiful. Oh, hello, Sals. Thank you, Nonikiwe. Hello, hello. Okay, so... They've just met, um, and she is in his warehouse. Uh, where was I? Okay, so every blink was slow and calmly. He became suddenly aware that I, I think of all the <laughs> high, her luxurious healing. He became suddenly aware that he was inhaling the air that came from her, and she was swallowing his. The gods have sent me to her. He thought as his eyes rested on Bolanle's bosom. Now that you and your friend have finished university, are you going to marry a man who will look after you? He asked. When I find one, she replied. It didn't seem like an opening for a middle-aged man with three wives and a home full of children, but he took it as one. He watched as Bolanle dipped her hand into her bag and brought out a tattered novel. Am I not an entertaining host? Polanle snapped the book the book shut. Tell me when you when you alone you alone will come this way again, he whispered quietly. Bolanle fixed her eyes on the desk between them. Come tomorrow, come the day after. Any time I see you again, I will know the gods have favoured me. Even when even he was surprised by his brazenness, but he sensed her vulnerability. And will your and you and will your wives not come and drive me out with a broom? My wives do not visit my workplace. Your friend should have told you that. Why would they? They are taken care of. They have no reason to trouble me. Babasegi felt an overwhelming urge to reach across the table and touch her, but he did his fists under the he hid his fists under the desk that was how it started she came the next day and then the next and then every weekday until he had to bask in palm wine at weekends to make time pass quickly he couldn't wait to have her to show her off as his own he wanted to be the envy of all his peers true enough many did not hide their resentment they told him he was a fool to marry a graduate, that she was only after his money, that she didn't love him and would leave him for a younger, educated man after she got what she came for. Babasegi laughed in their faces until eventually they came to terms with their own inadequacies. 
Yeah, so uh love at first sight, yeah, yes, um that sells. Um Ms. Weiner says, I agree with Noniki Way. I gobbled the book so quick I need to reread it and savor it. Um Lerato Mukwatli is here. Madame Madame Africa says, same here, Ms. Weiner. Oh, was it that good, guys? And I'm already reading the 30th candle. Um, Sal says, Ndate Oki Smooth Operator. Ha. And yeah, you need a copy. Um, Zindatu says, uh, I don't get how polygamous men fall in love so many times at once. Is it possible to love so many people at once? Like, guys, <laughs> well, yeah, no. But uh, Porsche says, Baba Segi Kizuma, our former president. Um, Zindatu, uh, so Lerato says uh, your uh, your your question is a trigger. <laughs> yeah, so now he's fallen in love with um with her. At five, Babasegi called Taju, his driver, and told him to start the engine of the pickup. The engine of the pickup. His mind was made up. He would speak to Bolanle that night. It was Tuesday, and he would be spending the night with her anyway. He flopped into the passenger seat and stroked his hairless chin all the way home. Daju honked twice as he drove into the large compound. The entire household poured out of different rooms to welcome the benefactor. Hey, it must be nice being a polygamous man. Baba Segi's three sons lay prostate. Prostate, their torsos curled upwards with mats rearing their edges. The daughters knelt before him. From the eldest child to the youngest, he called them by their names. Segi and Akin, a daughter before a son, from his first wife, Tope. Afolake and Motun, three girls born 11 months apart from the second. And Femi and Kole, sons, smugly birthed by Ia, Ia Femi, his third wife. Babasegi looked lovingly into the faces of the older children and pinched the cheeks of the younger ones. He made each child feel extraordinary. Midway to the sitting room, Babasegi paused at the bogus archway as if it had suddenly occurred to him that the children couldn't have delivered themselves. Then, like he always did, he swung round and turned to his wives. And with unabashed flirtatiousness he greeted them Iasegi, Iatope, Iafegi, Femi, Bolanle. Each woman curtsied, proud to be defined by her firstborn child, except Bolanle, who was Ia to none. The greetings done with, Babasegi raised his arms so his Agbada could be pr priced off by Iasegi's deft fingers. She did the same with his booba, and Babasegi stumbled into the sitting area in his trousers and his vest, his eyes leading the way to his luxurious armchair. He stood with his back to it, and, as always, he collapsed into it as if he had been struck by death. <laughs> he, like, he tore at his watch and pulled it off his wrist. Before he placed it on the wooden stool beside him, Iasegi had put her hand out to receive it. He smiled the way he always did. Iasegi, wife of my youth, would I have breath if I had not married you? Iasegi paused and turned to him. May your breath be long, my lord. Where would I be if not for you? They were ritually joined in this reciprocal admiration until Iafemi's bogus coughing interrupted them. The third wife could never stomach the display of old-fashioned affection. Besides, if any form of favoritism didn't involve her or her children, she was quick to register her disapproval. Iasegi brought a long wooden stool and placed it in front of her husband while her daughter, Segi, measuring her every step, carried in a bowl of hand-washing water. After, stepping, after steeping his hands in the bowl, 
Babasegi dried them with a towel that was draped over his daughter's arm. He pulled the stool towards his, his crotch and proceeded to demolish the mountain of Amala morsel by morsel, catching every string of a wedu that dripped down his wrist with his tongue. At the sound of a familiar melody, the children jostled for space in front of the TV and sang along to the theme tune of Afowofa, Afu, Afu their favorite soap opera. So there's um, the lyrics. I don't want to read them because, hey, um, I'm sold. I'm definitely getting a copy. So Reveal is getting a copy. Whoop, whoop. Yes. Um, I didn't like that part where he's greeting all the wives and their children and Bolande is mother, is not a mother and like she's mother to none, like seriously. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's so sad, right? Um, so Bacala Queen says she's definitely getting a copy and her luxurious healing says so well written, the breath. Ah, Sals is charmed by this man. Yes, as big as he is, well, the sound of it, it's like he's this, you know, Kadi, who's, you know, and he's like charming all his wives. Oh, the book delicately explains the reasons for Babasegi's reasons for marrying his wives. Um, okay, yeah, Zintatu says, I think Sal is in love. Ah, wife number five. <laughs> Hi, Patu. Hi, everybody that just came in. So, um, guys, it's quarter two. I've been reading for 45, well, I've been live for 45 minutes. I'm done. Um, that is the intro to Babasegi's Wives. Um, not Babasegi's Wives. Why do we say that? Uh, even yesterday, we said the same. We said the Babasegi's Wives. We're going to read Babasegi's Wives, but it is The Secret Lives of Babasegi's Wives. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and that was it guys. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow, Friday. What are we reading tomorrow? We're reading the mothers. We're reading from the mothers. Yes, I got that. Um, Ms. Viner says, I also love how Lola stays authentic to her Yoruba proverbs and idioms. Um, yes. Sal says, I must stop looking at the clock and must just read, hey, 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 I have to go cook. I have to go cook. Um, but yeah, that was, that was lacquer. I, I love her writing. Oh my goodness. Thank you to my book fairy uh, for getting this book for me. Um, let me see if I can read anything at the back. There's nothing. Okay, so every chapter, okay, Bol, ugh, I think she's going to be a winner because she's on the last chapter, Bolandle. Ha! Guys, you must get the book. Oof. Now I can't wait. And this month I'm only reading the 30th candle and next week from the 15th will be, from the 16th we'll be reading Bomboy. So what are you guys reading? Um... We, 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 uh, like I said earlier, for, for those who came in late, um, I've loaded this, I will load this on IGTV once I'm done and then I will load it up on YouTube. Um, there is a YouTube channel called Bugamusa Book Club where I load all the videos, um, just for archiving, just for archiving and making sure that people who can't be on IGTV and people who are on Instagram, uh, on Facebook, and they can't join on Instagram, um, do get the book, do get to read, um, do get to listen in on the book readings, sorry. And yeah, that's, that's Bukamasa Book Club on, um, so across all the network, the social um, networks I am, uh, I am loading everything. Um, Ms. Reiner says, Ish, the title is a long sentence. Yes, it's a long sentence. Oksala, it's Babasegi's wives. Yes, it's Babasegi's wives. 
Hi, 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 Pato. I can't keep on going. I'm sorry. You guys must get the book. Um, and Portia says, I must cook early. No, I don't. I like cooking in the evening. Like, and then I have my, my something, you know? Yes. Um, Elufefe says, uh, the reading Dangerous Love by Ben Okri. Okay. Um, once, uh, Lerato can't deal. Oh, oh, okay. No. Yeah, no, it must be, uh, Lerato says, I just called the book Babasegi. Babasegi is, yeah, like, ki Babasegi. No. Hey, this, this is long. This is long. No. Ki Babasegi's wives. So we'll just hashtag it Babasegi's wives. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, that was today's reading, guys. It will be uploaded on IGTV. Um, please subscribe to YouTube. There will be, um, uh, 50 subscribers giveaway coming soon hopefully before end of july yeah um i'm celebrating because even if i'm loading um videos that i've already like got on igtv i'm just keeping the youtube channel as that archiving space and yeah i will be loading them up um daily i actually am up to date i updated today um, this one will be coming up in a few minutes onto YouTube. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, Ms. Vina says, I need to read Ben Okri. He has so many books. I don't know where to start. So maybe um, Ilufefe can um, let us know where to read, where to start. If anyone has read Ben Okri, I haven't. Um, that would be nice for us to know where to start uh please let us know hi zama hi everybody hi miss m miss Lonis. Loni. hi miss Loni. um for those who missed it this is what we read today and it sounds like it's a good good juicy 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 like hobizi humanat you know um i'm looking forward to it uh i won't be reading it oh and this there's a there's a family tree actually there's a family tree on here and the family tree yeah it doesn't it says Bolan was married 99 1999 and she doesn't have any children so EFME yeah, yeah, was born was was married 1994 Ia yeah, Tope was married 1989 so 84 89 94 and 99 so yeah and he's got seven kids so yeah and he didn't waste time no with Ia Segi um the first was born in Segi Segi was born in 86 and the next one was born in 88 so 86 88 90 91 92 so whew. yeah no Ia Tope was yeah so Ia Tope Mary got gave birth in 1990 and then in 1991 and then in 1992 like abc done and then she was done and then after that they had a, a four-year break a three-year break uh with femi and femi was born in 95 so hey you didn't waste time guys in 86 right up till 97 and then 97 after that he was like i i need my eighth child and yeah but Bolanle, Dololo. So we'll see what happens. But I think Bolanle is going to win. She's going to be a winner. Yeah, he didn't waste time, Erin Sals. The family tree is questionable. More reasons to read the book. It's questionable. Hi, Bo. Miss Vina. Okay, now I want to. Yo, guys, I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to read the 30th candle for the co-reading. And then, just before next week, yay, I will be done. Um, <laughs> but yes, that was today's reading. I have to go, guys. I have to go cook. I love you. Thank you, guys. I quite liked the ending. So, Patu liked. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> and Sarah says, you are in for a treat with this book. <gasps> Sips my something. It's gonna be nice. <laughs> it gets hot. Watch and see. So satisfying. I love books like that. Like discussion points. They're good discussion points. They are like 
you know they got the tea it's a book about women's agency ah <laughs> You applaud the women. Oh my goodness, I can't wait now. <laughs> but this says Ruby says hi. She's forcing me to say hi. Hi Ruby Links. Oh. <laughs> Lerato is laughing. I'm like, yo, it gets hot. You you are in for a treat, guys. Now I'm like Yo, oh, like there's so many books to read, guys. It gave me so excited. You know, like when you're getting like adrenaline, just <gasps> yo. <laughs> Isn't that too? You must get the book. Yes, run to Exclusive Books. Run. Let's get reading, guys. <gasps> now I'm super excited. Um, often say hi if you've just joined. Uh, Mel, hi. This will be saved on. <laughs> On the IGTV, I just finished reading this and it's amazing. Just from reading a few pages, we are already hooked. Um, so yeah. Anyway, guys, I love you. Thank you guys for joining me and thank you guys for coming back every day at 5 p.m. I will see you guys tomorrow at 5 o'clock and um, please do subscribe onto the YouTube channel. I will be loading this up in the next 30 minutes onto YouTube. If you have missed it, it will be on IGTV. Um, we are laughing at you, Zindata, because I know you definitely got a lot of books this week. Like, sis. Anyway, bye. Happy Thursday. Have, happy Pooza Thursday. <gasps> Be safe. Wear a mask if you have to go out. Don't go out if you don't have to. Please. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye, Kumbu. Bye, everybody. Bye, Zintatu. Bye, Simule. Kumbu, Lerato, Tlangelani, Ms. Vaina, Portia, Patu, Sally, Taz, and Kiufa. Bye. <laughs>